What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. We got that damn light again. So I'm gonna be looking away from the camera for this video. Uh, once again, we're in Wells, Nevada. As you just saw, no camper. There was nothing anywhere near me. Um, I was even willing to shoot over to California from Arizona to grab something if it was there. It's just not. Uh, being told that this is kind of normal about this time of year that the load boards get a little bit empty and it uh it runs like this throughout uh december that being said i'm not terribly worried because um the yards around my house within a, a couple hours of, of where i live they look like they're still completely full bunch of stuff so not worried about being out of work uh just getting the sequential loads might be a little more difficult uh, but should just be a few weeks we'll figure it out we'll keep rolling now that would be the bad news that i mentioned earlier is we are deadheading 900 miles to go home uh, first time i've ever had to do that involuntarily i have done it once from denver to goshen indiana but i knew i was getting one of those uh, big paying loads, so I, I was fine with it. Now I'm dead heading home just to go home. But I started thinking about it, and it made more sense for me to sacrifice the $200, $220 in, in diesel to get home than to just do a reset at a truck stop, because realistically, uh, food and and water for two days and then just spending money on random crap because i'm bored at a truck stop i'm not going to be too far off of that i mean realistically you know i'm throwing away 75 maybe maybe a hundred dollars and that's just because if i'm going to sit at a truck stop i'm not going to sit there and eat couple pieces of jerky or or whatever you know I'm, I'm gonna eat a real meal if i'm just sitting there because when i'm out on the road it is just what can i get in and out quick and get back on the road um so i, I don't really do a whole lot of real meals i keep a bag of trail mix and a bag of jerky in the truck and that's kind of what i snack on all day uh maybe a, a one of one of those fruit filled danish things in the morning and that's pretty much it and then if i happen to stop at a truck stop that has a restaurant then i i'll eat there for dinner but uh for the most part no i don't really eat a real meal but like i said if i was gonna spend two days at a truck stop every meal would have been a real meal because i'm not gonna eat crap if i can avoid eating crap and so spending 75 maybe a hundred dollars to go home and do my reset at home and then I have loads there that I know I have instead of praying that maybe something comes up and realistically sitting throughout the weekend, they're not gonna refresh the load board. So it would probably not gonna be a whole lot of uh, extra stuff come Monday morning. Maybe there, there could have been, you never know. So this just made more sense. I'll get home with right about an hour left on my 70 hour cycle and I'll do a reset and Sunday night my clock will reset and I'm already looking at a couple loads uh, that are off of the reload board so I should be able to self dispatch onto those and have one locked in uh, so we'll we'll figure that out um, but had one of you ask about the tools that I keep in my truck and I know I kind of went over the truck real briefly but I didn't go over like in depth what I have uh, so and there's been one change since uh i went through the truck and that is this this helps if i point the camera the right way this bag right here uh, obviously i would have my my lube stuff for the the fifth wheel on the ball and then i have an impact gun that you yeah you can kind of see it and then a very large crescent wrench and i keep two sockets in there and that impact gun and that that close and that socket wrench because those are the tools for the hitch those two big 
nuts and obviously the bolt head is on the other side uh, the reason it's two different sizes is that top one actually broke on me which was terrifying so I went and got five spare bolts spare nuts just to have all the spare pieces like it didn't break break all the way off but it was it got to where it was uh it wasn't securing like it was supposed to so the hitch was actually pivoting thankfully that was like 40 or 50 miles before my drop it wasn't very long i was it was less than an hour before my drop and i went ahead and dropped it and i was close to home so i just went home did a reset and ran and got uh those and i added some tools to the truck uh, on top of all of those things well those couple things I have so I didn't really go through this too well oh good that fell off so normally this stays right there and that's just a basic toolkit and then I've got my torque wrench for uh, checking the lug nuts on the trailers and then this is just some, some random random tools that i grabbed uh a deep well socket set because that's not in my toolkit some screwdrivers pliers and a pipe wrench because you never know when that's going to come in other than that i've got my 21,000 pound hitch just in case I have to I've already had to use that once so those of you that say why well, have that I've already had to use it once and this truck is rated for 21.5 and then battery tie down strap latch for the the pin on the bumper pulls and then the top for the battery which is in its own case in there and the rest of that is just uh, jumper cables a tow chain and a spare ratchet strap because I hauled a unit that was used and it had two batteries in it. So rather than disconnecting their batteries that they had on there and trying to, trying to rerun all the wiring, uh, I just used the two batteries that they had and picked up a, a second strap to tie him down that's really all I've got for you guys tonight uh, once again wells I seem to stay here a lot and we're dead heading home it's a long dead head but in the end not losing a whole lot of money and I get to spend the weekend with family and I'm guaranteed a load instead of hoping that a load appears on Monday. Uh, I've covered this once or twice, but for those of you that are new and have not gone back to my older videos, that was required. Uh, you can see here, some damage to the tailgate. And that's because I thought that I had sat on my key and hit the tailgate release. Uh, it turns out the 16 and newer Fords with the, well, you can't see it, but the, the push button tailgate, uh, they have a defect where they just open themselves. Uh, I read multiple stories about it on the internet, guys losing loads of wood, uh, tools, whatever. Uh, it happened to me twice, once before I started, and again, I thought I sat on the key, and then this time that did that into the front of one of those uh, toy haulers that I pulled from Goshen. So Horizon said, we're putting you out of service until you find a way to stop that from happening. Well, you can see there's multiple bolts across the back there. I just took one bolt out, put a little bit longer bolt in with some washers, chain, hook, done. Uh, they said that worked, put me back in service. I was out of service for all of an hour. <clears throat> Just because I happened to have that chain sitting in a random toolbox in my garage at home. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so if you have a newer Ford with the push button tailgate, that's something to be aware of for sure. So we're deadheading with nothing. Gave a quick recap on uh, some upgrades to what I'm holding in the toolbox. I will be home tomorrow morning, which will make me very happy. My 34 hour reset will be complete Sunday night. And well, I'll be home tomorrow, assuming there's no random crashes on the freeway, which has happened to me once and slowed me down by almost an hour or extreme weather. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's gonna be any of that. Everything looks fairly clear. Maybe some residual snow, but nothing to worry about. And uh, that's that. So, as always, those of you out on the roads, I wish you fair winds, following seas, take care and have a great day.